Hi, this is Ian XO4. Today I'll show you a new type of gold XP farm that is both incredibly easy to build in early survival and crazy powerful. This farm can be built in less than 25 minutes using barely any materials. It doesn't even use magma blocks. And yet this farm cranks out the equivalent of one gold block every 10 seconds and can take you from level 0 to level 30 in about one minute. This rivals the productivity of some of the most powerful gold farms, but takes only a small fraction of the time and resources to build. What you see on screen is the full list of everything that you'll need before starting this build. Yes, this is the complete list. You'll need one turtle egg that you can collect by using Silk Touch after breeding turtles with seagrass, and everything else is pretty basic. For auxiliary materials, you'll need an ender pearl to get to the nether roof, flint and steel to activate portals, a decent pickaxe, and some food. The farm itself is little more than four nether portals, placed strategically to act as an elevator that brings mobs from a spawning area up to the AFK spot, where you can use a looting sword to quadruple the number of drops from the farm. The zombie piglins spawn just below the bedrock ceiling of the nether, inside two rooms that you hollow out from the nether rack. Creating the spawning area this way is highly efficient, since any pickaxe better than diamond efficiency 2 can instantly mine netherrack, letting you hollow out this space for spawning platforms much faster than you could build them by harvesting and laying down individual magma blocks. There are virtually no naturally occurring spawning surfaces this high in the nether, so there isn't any spawn proofing that's necessary. And the spawning rooms that you make aren't tall enough for magma cubes, gas, and endermen to spawn here, so you don't need to worry about getting rid of them. The zombie piglins that spawn are drawn toward a turtle egg in the middle of the spawning area, but are caught by a nether portal that teleports them away. Ordinary piglins also spawn here, but they run away from zombie piglins. And since zombie piglins head toward the middle of the spawning area, the regular piglins tend to run towards the edges and corners, where they despawn once they exceed 128 blocks of distance from the player. The zombie piglins are teleported to a bridge in the overworld that is built high in the sky and has a nether portal on each side. One portal is slightly lower than the other, so this is the one that the zombie piglins arrive in when coming from the spawning area, since it's closer in altitude. After being teleported, mobs require 15 seconds of cooldown before they can go through another portal again, so we use the constant stream of new zombie piglins to slowly shove the crowd toward the higher portal. This higher portal takes them to the nether near the build limit, and feeds them into a killing chamber right by the player, who stands directly over the spawning area so that it's the only place where mobs can spawn. The preferred weapon for killing the zombie piglins is a sword enchanted with Sweeping Edge, Smite, Looting 3, and Mending. But any weapon will technically work. Even no weapon will work. You can let the zombie piglins entity cram themselves to death, but you won't get as many drops this way, of course. The player inventory serves as a sorting system for the farm, letting you pull out all the gold nuggets and ingots from the killing chamber while leaving the swords and rotten flesh behind so that they despawn on their own in five minutes. You simply reserve one or two slots in your inventory for gold ingots to catch the occasional one that drops from killing a zombie piglin, and fill in all the other available slots in your inventory with at least one gold nugget. This delivers the gold from the farm directly into your inventory, making it easy to craft the nuggets into ingots and blocks so that you can free up more space for farming. Alright, now let's get to building. You'll see in this tutorial that I use smooth stone as the building block sometimes. I do this just to make it easier for viewers to count blocks, but you can use any convenient building block, like netherrack. Start by finding an open area in the nether waste biome, and go up to the highest part of the ceiling by building a staircase or pillar. When you get to the top, work your way to an area inside the netherrack, so that you stand with your feet at Y118. Press F3 and G to turn on the grid lines for chunk borders, and follow the chunk borders to carve out a room that is 2 blocks tall and 2 chunks by 2 chunks in horizontal size. That's 32 by 32 blocks. You might come across a tiny pocket of lava when you create this room, but there are no pools of lava at this altitude, so this is quite safe. When you're done, use the F3 debug screen to double check that the entire room is in the nether wastes biome, and then collect at least 6 stacks of netherrack so that you can use these blocks later on. Go to the center of the room, where the four chunks intersect, and build the frame for another portal. You'll need to dig out a few blocks from the floor and ceiling to make room for the obsidian frame. When you're done, write down the X and Z coordinates of the portal, or take a screenshot. This is critical information that you will definitely need later on. Now place ten blocks to make a small room for the turtle egg, next to the portal, so that the only way to reach the egg would be to go through the portal. But don't place the egg yet, because any zombie piglins nearby will immediately try to trample it. 
Instead, build a staircase to get your feet to Y121, and then repeat the process of clearing out a 2 chunk by 2 chunk space directly over the one that you created below. In each corner of the spawning area, create a 2x2 two two hole between the two layers. Cover the hole with trapdoors and then open them so that regular piglins can drop down and despawn as they try to flee from zombie piglins. Back in the center of the room, place two blocks over the portal frame and extend the walls of the staircase to the ceiling. Go down the staircase and wall it off behind you. On the other side of the portal, remove the two netherrack blocks overhead, next to the portal opening, so that zombie piglins on the higher platform can drop down and enter the portal as well. Place the turtle egg on top of the bottom step of the staircase, and set a trapdoor to prevent zombie piglins from trampling it. Finally, activate the portal to finish the spawning area. Take a moment to double check your work. Make sure that there is no way to reach the turtle egg other than going through the portal. Make sure that the turtle egg is sitting on a solid block, is shielded by a trap door, and has at least two air blocks over the egg. Make sure that the portal is activated, that you have the X and Z coordinates for the portal recorded, and that there's a hole in between the spawning layers next to the portal for zombie piglins to drop through. Check each corner to make sure that there is a 2x2 two two hole in between spawning layers, and that you have open trap doors in each. Now set a ladder in a corner to get yourself up to the higher layer, and check again that there's no way to reach the egg other than dropping down and going through the portal. Now we need to access the nether roof. Go to a corner of the room, and from there, explore above to find a bedrock block overhead at Y126 or Y127. You can press F3 and use the targeted block information on the right side of the screen to figure out the Y coordinate of the block that you're looking at. When you find one, place ladders so that they run all the way up to the target bedrock block. While on the ladder, hold down both the forward and jump keys at the same time. Throw an ender pearl straight at the ladder as you continue to hold down both forward and jump keys, and you'll go through to the other side of the nether bedrock. This will sting a little, so be careful if you're low on health. Once you're on the roof, go to the X and Z coordinates for the nether portal, and pillar up until your feet are at Y244, and then place a glass block under you so that your feet are at Y245. Bridge out on 20 glass blocks and build a frame for another portal that will serve as the entrance and exit for the farm, and put slabs on top to spawn proof it. Put guard rails on the far side of the portal so that you don't accidentally stumble off when using it, and light the portal. Now head back to the pillar to expand the bridge to make a 6x6 glass platform. Add three temporary blocks on top of the pillar, followed by an obsidian block. Your feet should now be at Y249 when standing on the obsidian. Build the frame for another portal, again with spawn proofing on top, and then jump down to your platform and remove the three temporary blocks, and then build the sides of the killing chamber out of glass blocks. Stand under the portal and place a crafting table under the opposite side of the killing chamber and place a double chest as the floor of the chamber. Pillar up on five blocks next to the portal and wall off the back side of the portal with blocks and slabs. Add ladders, light the portal, and then crouch down so that you can enter it. Once you're in the overworld, destroy the portal that you just came through. Now multiply the X and Z coordinates that you recorded earlier by 8, and pillar up at this location until your feet are at about Y190, and then add an obsidian block. Build a frame for another portal so that the portal is 3 blocks wide on the inside, instead of the usual 2. Add a wall on one side of the opening to block mobs from falling off, and then bridge out the other direction by 11 blocks, and build another portal at the end of the bridge so that it lines up with the first one, except for that this one is just one block higher in altitude.
There should be 10 blocks in between the two portal frames, and only the lower portal should have a wall behind it. Finish the bridge and add guardrails between the two portals, and add three slabs to the floor right next to the higher portal so that mobs will automatically go up a block when shoved towards the portal. Now light the two portals and use either one to take you back to the killing chamber. Jump over the killing chamber when you arrive, and the farm will start working once you land on the platform. It'll take about a minute for the overworld bridge to fill up with zombie piglins, and then you'll start seeing them show up at the killing chamber. While you're waiting, stand under the portal and move your inventory into the chest. Place a single gold ingot into one of your inventory slots, and place a single gold nugget into each of the remaining slots. When the zombie piglins arrive, swing at their feet about once per second so that the sweeping edge attack has time to charge up each time. When your inventory fills up with gold, step away from the killing chamber so that you don't pick up the junk inside, and then craft the nuggets and ingots into gold blocks so that you have room to keep going. This farm should have no issue working in single player mode, or if you're the only player on a server. But if there are other players on the server, you'll need to either make sure that none of them are in the overworld, or you can have an alt account or friend jump onto the rails of the bridge and set a block overhead to prevent phantoms. This player's presence simply ensures that the zombie piglins don't have a chance to despawn as they cross the bridge. When you're done, maybe split the gold with your friend as a way to say thanks, or swap places so that you each get a turn. I hope this video helps you rake in more gold and XP than you'll ever need. Golden apples, golden carrots, beacons, trading gold with clerics to get emeralds, bartering, which lets you get soul speed, powered rails, netherite ingots, and piglin safe armor are some of the uses that you'll find for gold. I hope that you've enjoyed this video, and be sure to check out the video description for additional tips and corrections. Thanks for watching. Thank <laughs> you.